Hi, in this video I will show you how I fix the wobble in my Rockwell Blade Runner miter gauge. If you have one of these saws, you've probably experienced the frustration of trying to use the miter gauge. It's not very precise. Here's the rail from the miter gauge. A YouTube video showed fixing a similar problem with the DeWalt miter gauge using duct tape. I decided to see if I could fit if this fix would work with the Blade Runner. The Blade Runner miter bar has a T-shape made to fit into a T-track, but instead of an aluminum T-track, it fits loosely into a molded plastic groove on the table. This meant that I needed to wrap the duct tape around that profile, keeping it tight and bubble free to allow it to slide freely. I did this by using a putty knife to press the tape firmly against the rail, closely following the contour and forcing out any bubbles. Here's how I went about cutting the duct tape and applying it to the miter gauge rail. First I pull out a length of tape, slightly greater than the length of the rail, and cut it with a sharp pair of scissors. I fixed it to a clean, dry, glass surface. Then I marked where I needed to cut the tape to length, placing the marks to avoid the mitered corners of the rail. In my case, this came out to be about 227 millimeters between the marks. I then reproduced the marks on the other side of the tape and connected the dots. I used a scrap piece of angled aluminum as a straight edge to guide the cuts. This also allows me to protect my fingers between, uh, behind the vertical fence. I cut the tape with a sharp bladed utility knife along the bottom and top lines. Then I peeled away the excess tape and discarded it. The width of the strip needs to be about 15 millimeters in order to wrap the edge of the miter rail. I measured and marked the tape, trying to be as precise as I could, and marking at least three points. Then I connected the dots. Again, I used the straight edge and utility knife to make the cut. Then I peeled away the excess tape. And used the remaining 15 millimeter wide strip to fold around the miter gauge rail. I started on the underside of the rail and placed the tape precisely aligned with the vertical edge and smoothed it out with the putty knife. Then I worked my way over the corner onto the bottom edge of the rail, smoothing out all the bubbles. Then onto the side and top surfaces. I tried to cut the tape precisely so it wouldn't protrude above the top surface of the rail. If you do leave a bubble, you can use a needle to poke a hole in the bubble and then smooth it away with the utility knife. Once you have applied the tape to the rail, which can be tedious, so I won't bore you with that, then it's time to reassemble the miter gauge. Gather the four pieces in addition to the rail. First place the graduated fence on the rail. Align the plastic pivot in the topmost hole and holding the fence against the rail, pass the threaded insert up into the second hole from below the rail. Then screw the knob onto the threaded insert and snug it up, and there's no real need to tighten it at this point. Next, insert the screw to hold the escutcheon 
in the threaded hole at the end of the rail. Use a Phillips screwdriver to snug this up also. You'll need to adjust it in a moment, so don't fully tighten. I used a square to align the miter gauge. You can use any type you feel comfortable with, but I like the speed square. Now we're ready to try out the fit on the Blade Runner. Put the miter gauge into the groove on the table, wiggling it slightly to get it past the first two molded plastic hold downs. Once it is in, it should slide nicely into the groove. In my case, there was still a small amount of play, allowing the rail to wobble slightly in the groove, but it was nowhere near the full degree or two that I experienced before the fix. Try not to slide the gauge on the blade. There is a stop at the, top, at the top of the groove in the table that will peel the duct tape away from the guide if you press too hard. I hope you have as much success as I did if you try this fix. I like to believe that there are two essential tools in your workshop, duct tape and WD-40. Duct tape to make things stop and WD-40 to make things go. Until next time, have fun.